Hi, I'm Tony. Welcome to Sports Bike Shop's review of the new Shoei GT Air 3 helmet. This is the second important new Shoei of 2023. It's the GT Air 3 Sports Touring Helmet. The details were revealed at the same time as the Neotech 3 flip front that we reviewed recently, and now we've been able to get out on the roads and review this one properly as well. The GT Air 2 has only been in the range for four years, and Shoei models normally have a seven year lifespan. So this GT Air 3 is more about evolution than revolution really. But there's still quite a lot of change to go through, and I've found this to be a solid step on from the GT Air 2 in my time out on the road with it. The revamp has really been a necessity because of the arrival of the new ECE 2206 safety standard, but the changes go beyond what's necessary to meet that. The changes they've made are designed to make this helmet quieter, better ventilated, and to give sleeker integrated communication options. I think Shoei have done all of that, but before we get too much into that, let's run through the essential details. The shell is made from the same composite fibres that are used throughout Shoei's recent lids. It's the advanced integrated matrix of fibres. There's still the raised portion above the eye port, which allows room for a sun visor to retract inside the helmet without reducing the thickness of the EPS impact liner inside the helmet. The shape overall is very similar to its predecessor, although it is slightly narrower at the chin to help the helmet cut through the air without as much disruption. Weight is up compared to the GTR2, which is no surprise really, as ECE 2206 helmets tend to be a bit heavier than their older equivalents. This size medium GTR3 weighs in on our scales at 1665 grams. That's about an 8% increase over the GTR2, which we weighed at 1542 grams. It's not really that weight is an issue out on the road. This helmet has a good balance, and in 300 miles of riding, I didn't have any issues at all in that regard. Ventilation, that's important in a helmet that's meant for touring riders who are going to spend long stints in the saddle. The chin vent slides open to reveal two holes that let air come through the chin bar and then flow onto the inner surface of the visor. I found that vent to be quite effective when riding a Suzuki GS XS1000 GT, though I wouldn't describe the ventilation there as class leading. The top vent, that's been moved forward compared to the GT Air 2 and I found this to be more effective than the chin vent. Sliding this one open brings a refreshing breeze into the helmet, where channels in the EPS impact liner help that circulate throughout. There are no exhaust vents through to the shell on this helmet, and it seems to rely on air escaping through holes in the EPS liner, and then that air circulating between the shell and the EPS. The visor's all new. It's a CNS1C model, and it follows Shoei's general trend of moving the operating tab to the center. From fully open, there are five stages before the visor reaches the city position or the cracked position. And this leaves a five millimeter gap between visor lip and the helmet to let air flow into the eye port. The sixth step brings the visor to rest on the seal and then a firm push locks it down. I found it took quite a firm squeeze of the chin bar to make the visor lock while I was riding. And it took more effort than on the Neotech 3 that I reviewed recently. So that could just be a quirk of this individual helmet. To release the lock, you push the button underneath the visor and that frees it so you can lift the visor. This new visor is thicker around the top ridge just here, which helps it create a stronger seal to keep the rain out at the top. I wore this helmet through some very heavy rain and that seal held up perfectly. The visor is protected against mist by a pinlock insert, which comes in the box. It's a pinlock Evo. Every other manufacturer calls that a pinlock 120, but shall we call it a pinlock Evo? Either way, it's the top grade of protection and that held out perfectly well when I used it in the rain. This visor gives good peripheral vision, but the pinlock doesn't extend as far to the sides as some rival helmets, which means its edges are more in vision than on other helmets. It's not a problem as such, but other brands now do it a little bit better, and this is Shoei, who pride themselves on being the best, so I would like to see them address that in future. Behind the main visor, there's Shoei's sun visor. It's the same as the one on the GT Air 2, but if you're coming from the original GT Air, then the sun visor is now slightly deeper than that, and there's also a bigger cut in it just around here to make sure it clears big noses. It operates on this sliding switch by the left ear, and that's now sheltered by a larger spoiler just here, which stops air hitting that switch where it can make a bit too much noise as you ride. Having the switch here rather than at the base of the lid just here means there's more room here for the intercom, which we'll get to in a minute. There's no mention of an anti-fog coating in showy spec for the sun visor, but I didn't have big problems with it misting. But if I stopped at a junction for a while on a damp morning, then it would start to fog up and I would need to lift the visor, the main visor, slightly to get some air in to clear that sun visor. Right, let's move to the inside of the lid. The interior is just as anyone who's ever owned a showy would expect it to be. The bits that rub over your face a lot, so these sections just here are nice and soft. 
and the bits that don't are grippier to help the lid stay in place. That lining is all removable and with it being a showy there's the option to swap some of the pads inside, swap them around so that you can get a more customised fit. That's probably best done in one of our shops but our customer support team can also help people who are buying one of these helmets online. You get a large chin guard as well, it's a bit bigger than the one that was supplied with the GTR2 and there's also a breath guard supplied with the helmet just here. Both of those are in the box so you have to have a rummage around in the box, get them out and then you can install them yourself. The strap fastener for the GTR3 is also revised. It's now slightly narrower and the micrometric fastening buckle has also been slimmed down, which helps cut down slightly on noise as air flows over it while you ride. Behind the lining, there are the intercom speaker recesses and that moves us on to one of the key revisions for this helmet. This uses Shoei's next generation SRL3 intercom, which is available separately. It's a Senna system using mesh and Bluetooth. It's got a high technical specification and it attaches very neatly to the GTR3. It's very small, which helps keep wind noise down and fitting it adds just 90 grams to the overall weight. We now have an SRL3 intercom and I've started work on reviewing that. Once we've completed that review, we'll add a link to the description below. For many, the SRL3 unit will be very good news. It's high spec, it's perfectly tailored to this helmet, it's easy to fit, it has a very minimal effect on wind noise and the early signs for me are that it works very well. But for some, that integration is a problem. Some people already have an intercom that they'd prefer to use, but the way this helmet is set up will make it more difficult for them to fit anything other than the SRL3. Avoiding the area that's set aside for that SRL3, just around here, means an off-the-peg intercom will have to sit in a position that's less than ideal, probably somewhere back here. If you've got the previous SRL2 intercom that went on the GTR2 and other older Shoeys, then that won't fit straight on this helmet either. Shoeys UK and Porter have told us they're working on an adapter that will let you fit an older SRL2 intercom to this helmet. Again, we'll add a link to the description for this video when that adapter is available. Okay, so let's move on. Sizing, approvals and pricing. The GTR3 comes in sizes from extra small up to double extra large. There are three shell sizes for that range. Helmet sizes extra small, small and medium go in the smallest of the three shells. Large has a shell to itself and then XL and 2XL go in the biggest of the three shells. The GTR3 is approved to the latest road standard ECE 2206 and it's also ACU gold so it can be used on UK racetracks. There's no rating under the UK government's sharp impact testing program as we record this but we'll add one to the description below if it's released. I won't be holding my breath on that as there's no sharp rating as we record this for the GTR2 and that helmet came out four and a half years ago. Okay then, pricing. As we record this, the Shoei GTR3 costs £529.99 in plain white or in gloss black. It's £559.99 in other plain colours and it's £649.99 for graphics like this Realm design. If you want to add the SRL3 comms unit, then it's an extra £339 per unit. Right, let's sum up. I've had this helmet for three days and I've covered about 300 miles on the road on a Suzuki GSX S1000 GT. I found it to be typically showy in its build quality and the feel it gives you on the inside of the helmet. Everything is just slick, from the finish on the shell to the way the visors function and the fastener does up. People will want to know from me whether it's noisy. I can only give you my personal experience. It could be completely different for anyone else. But I found noise to be pretty unremarkable, really. I didn't find it particularly quiet. I didn't find it particularly noisy. When I fitted the SRL3 intercom, I felt the noise levels had gone up a little bit even though the unit itself is tiny, but I am planning to check that out a little bit more thoroughly as part of the review of the intercom. I thought the ventilation was good without being exceptional, and the cracked position for the visor was good at letting some breeze get inside the eye port. It's good to know the rain seal is very effective as well, and also rode at 60 miles an hour with the visor in intermediate steps and found that it stayed open perfectly well. A lot of people like to know that. When you make the investment of going for a top-line helmet like a Shoei, you want to know that you're getting the quality to match that outlay. And after spending a few hundred miles wearing this helmet, I'm confident people will feel that they've got what they paid for. I hope that tells you everything you wanted to know about the Shoei GTR 3 helmet. But if there's anything you'd like to ask or to add, then please pop a comment below. Thanks for watching.